G'day viewers, in this episode we're going to decompose an article appearing in The Big Think on the 2nd of May 2023. The title of the article is Strange But True, The Expanding Universe Doesn't Conserve Energy. The article develops an elaborate approach to invalidly justify an absurd conclusion, that is, that the law of conservation of energy doesn't apply at the cosmological scale. The article recognises that it applies to all other scales of reality, but it magically breaks down somewhere in between the quantum and cosmological scales, somehow, without providing any evidence for the scale at which it switches. This alone rings alarm bells. Consider this. If someone can't quantify a scaling process from beginning to end, then they don't fully grasp the scaling process to begin with. In other words, if you can't put hard numbers and boundaries on a problem, then you don't know what you're talking about. Sorry, but this article is just hand -waving. In my opinion, we need to take a step back from the position of what to think to a position of how to think, because there is always more than one way to skin a cat. An unwavering belief in general relativity to the point of religious faith causes the so-called law of conservation of energy breakdown, which we are discussing in this video. Once again, I shall emphasize that if someone can't put hard numbers and boundaries on a problem, then they don't know what they are talking about. Therefore, the article written and the standard physics explanation it presents is a clear case of a clueless argument. If the article had any real clues or answers, then the required numbers and scale boundaries I discussed earlier would have been stated or referenced. But no, readers are presented with vague explanations more suited to a David Copperfield magic show rather than science. So where does this article break down? Well, it breaks down in a number of places, but overall the answer is very simple. It breaks down because of general relativity. We will circle back to address some of these breakdowns as we move through the presentation, but for right now, what is important to keep in the front of your mind is that as soon as you switch on general relativity, you automatically switch off quantum mechanics. In fact, specifically, you switch off the quantum vacuum. Therefore, by switching off the quantum vacuum, you are switching off the law of conservation of energy instantly on a cosmological scale. It really is that simple. By switching on general relativity, you are literally switching off the quantum harmonic operator, which means that you are switching off Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. You need to ask yourself, is this something that you really want to do? Do you really want to throw Heisenberg into the rubbish bin? Is this a wise move? Every point in space-time has a quantum harmonic operator associated with it. This is standard quantum electrodynamics. Are you so confident about general relativity that you are willing to switch off quantum mechanics and chuck out Heisenberg? Well, if you are, then my advice to you is think again. General relativity was built upon the existence of a bare vacuum, that is, a description of space-time which has no quantum properties at all, none. That's why Einstein spent the rest of his life trying to fix his own production failure. By the mid-1920s, it had already been reasoned by quantum physicists that general relativity worked, but was fundamentally flawed. We need to remember that the power of general relativity is not in the theory, it's in the mathematics underpinning the theory, which could be stripped away and utilised for other gravitational models. If we strip away the mathematics from general relativity, we aren't left with much. The only part of general relativity which touches our everyday lives that I can think of are GPS satellites. Einstein didn't develop the mathematics in isolation. He had help from professional mathematicians, and quite possibly it's conceivable that he may have never been able to achieve his objectives without that external help. The bottom line here is that if general relativity is telling you that energy is not being conserved, then very, very clearly there's something wrong with general relativity, not the law of conservation of energy. Let's now look at a quick summary of the Big Think article, then we'll move through it in a bit more detail, step by step. The article states three key takeaways as follows. Firstly, it recognises that one of the most important laws in all of physics is the law of conservation of energy, that energy can change forms but can never be created nor destroyed. Secondly, it claims that at a fundamental level, that's only true because there's an underlying symmetry that the universe obeys. It's termed time translation symmetry, and it means that a system, so the universe, is the same from one moment to the next. However, the article states that since our universe is expanding, it is different from one moment to the next. Consequently, energy is not conserved. The issue we have with the key takeaways is not with either of the first two. 
it's with the third one. We take issue with the conclusion that energy is not conserved in an expanding universe. Why do we take issue with this? Because to draw this conclusion, they had to switch off quantum mechanics by ignoring the quantum harmonic operator associated with the quantum vacuum. That is, by ignoring a fundamental requirement of quantum electrodynamics. Of course, if you are going to simply delete Heisenberg, you can expect something to break. Of course, if you redefine reality by deleting quantum mechanics, we would expect our understanding of nature to fall apart. There should be no surprise here. It should be obvious. Having said all this, the article auto reached for standard scientific dogma by employing general relativity mindlessly without considering how to think, only what to think. Okay, let's have a look at some specific breakdown points within the article. The first significant breakdown point is the issue of massless photons. We covered the issue of massless photons in episode 80, so we recommend that viewers please take the time to review the episode. However, it is essential for viewers to understand that the most eminent collaboration of particle physicists in the world, that is the particle data group, provision for the existence of massive photons. Why would they do this if the photon was convincingly massless? Surely, if the position of massless photons was conclusive, then provisioning for the existence of massive photons simply would not occur. Hence, the obvious question is, why does the particle data group provision for the existence of massive photons in direct contradiction to special and general relativity? Well, the answer to this is surprisingly obvious. The particle data group provisions for the existence of massive photons because particle physics is dominated by quantum mechanics, not general relativity. Thus, the particle data group realised that the true essence of natural existence at the fundamental level is quantum mechanical, not general relativity. So, viewers watching this presentation need to explain to themselves and others why the most esteemed collective of particle physicists on Earth are prepared to abandon Einstein in favour of Heisenberg. The particle data group by publishing a threshold value for photon mass energy, openly and publicly recognise that general relativity could be wrong. They openly and publicly acknowledge that general relativity has issues so profound that the core concept of massless photons may be completely mistaken. So then, what is the bottom line? Well, very clearly, the bottom line is that general relativity, which governs the arguments contained within the Big Think article, could be wrong, and consequently, the argument for the breakdown in the law of conservation of energy could be entirely and completely misguided. This means that, once again, as soon as we switch on general relativity, we are switching off quantum mechanics. And very obviously, the most prestigious professional collective of particle physicists in the world, that is, the particle data group, take exception to this via their massive photon provision. Okay, let's now take a look at the second breakdown point. The Big Think article breaks down again by introducing the cosmological constant and imbuing it with dark energy properties. There is no valid reason to do this. It is simply a speculative guess by the standard model of cosmology. The actual fact of the matter is that the standard model of cosmology does not understand the physical meaning of the cosmological constant. The cosmological constant was a mathematical additive, that's why it's constant. It was flippantly introduced by Einstein to accommodate his expectation of a static universe. Only nowadays, in recent times, is the physical meaning of the cosmological constant being interpreted as a dark energy indicator. Prior to the discovery of dark energy, the cosmological constant was considered to be Einstein's greatest blunder. The problem that has been introduced is that the cosmological constant is, by mathematical definition, constant. The fact that it appears to align with present-day observations only means that it agrees with present-day observations. It does not mean that the cosmological history of the cosmological constant is understood or evident. Remember, the cosmological constant has been defined as being constant, so the Friedman, Lemaitre, Robertson, Walker interpretation of space-time has been forcibly constrained by a constant function, that is, the cosmological constant. In other words, the logic presented in the article is circular and coincidental because it attributes a present-day observation to a mathematical definition. It does not generate a definition based upon observation. It equates an observation to an already existing mathematical definition. It's a backwards approach. 
Hence, by equating present-day dark energy observations to an already existing mathematical definition, the standard model of cosmology is artificially insisting that the dark energy density parameter is also constant. So, as I've mentioned, the argument presented in this article is circular. The bottom line here is that breaking the law of conservation of energy becomes inevitable because a changing universe is being constrained by a mathematical definition. We call it the cosmological constant. What this means is that in order to fix the contradiction and collision of logic, the cosmological constant must have cosmological history associated with it. Fortunately, we presented a solution for this at a conference hosted by CERN in December 2022. Okay. Now that you know a cosmological history solution for the cosmological constant exists, let's take a closer look. The title of the research article presented at the CERN conference was The History of the Cosmos from the Big Bang to the Present Epoch. Appearing on screen are the six governing equations. The equation describing the cosmological history of the cosmological constant is emphasised. Appearing on the bottom half of the slide, you'll see the link to the published article on ResearchGate. You'll also see a link to the research article presented at CERN, and you'll see a link to a YouTube video of the presentation delivered at the CERN conference. As a minimum, we recommend viewing the YouTube video. Okay, with the computational engine defined by equation 1, let's look at the cosmological constant graph it generates. As mentioned previously, the cosmological constant was flippantly invented by Einstein to accommodate his conception of a static universe and therefore is actually constant. It does not vary with time, by definition. However, nothing was known about an accelerating universe in Einstein's day, so including a constant seemed to make sense. The trouble is that nature tends to be nonlinear. This slide exhibits the electrogravimagnetic solution for the cosmological constant constrained by the cosmic microwave background radiation. It should not escape your attention that it changes with time. It is definitely not a true constant. However, no truly constant solution can exist at all due to the influence of cosmological acceleration. Our solution was forwardly derived from first principles and all the equations and information required to replicate these curves appear on the illustration. This image contains two graphs. The first graph plots the value of the cosmological constant in the primordial universe, whilst the second graph plots the late age value of the cosmological constant. There are five important instances on these graphs. The first is the Big Bang at T alpha. The second is when the cosmological constant transitioned from positive to negative at root 2 T alpha. The third significant instance occurs when the cosmological constant transitions from negative to positive at a cosmological age of 7.3 billion years. The fourth significant instance occurs when the cosmological constant reaches its maximal value at a cosmological age of approximately 11 billion years. And the final significant instance occurs in the present epoch. The most important observation to make with this illustration is that the cosmological constant was negative for the first half-life of the universe. However, it is now positive and shall remain that way. Let's now take a look at how the quantum vacuum fits into all of this. We propose that the ground state of the quantum vacuum, termed the zero-point field, acts as a pressure release valve for a layer of inaccessible reality beneath it, termed the dark reservoir of quantum potential energy. Hence, matter radiates gravitons, and these gravitons are stored in the dark reservoir of quantum potential energy. The dark reservoir of quantum potential energy is a fourth spatial dimension, which in turn feeds the zero-point field with quantum potential energy. Consequently, the zero-point field feeds the Casimir effect and accelerated cosmological expansion. Therefore, the system is a closed loop and the law of conservation of energy applies and is obeyed. In other words, baryonic matter radiates populations of gravitons which are absorbed by the dark reservoir of quantum potential energy via the zero-point field interface. General relativity interprets this absorption as space-time curvature. Thus, the mechanism we have described is isomorphic to general relativity. However, as one might expect, the store of gravitons within matter is finite. This means that all matter possesses a minimum gravitational lifetime. Please refer to episodes 6 and 19 for more information. The important takeaways from this illustration are 1. All matter acts as an energy source. 2. All matter evaporates via graviton radiation. 3. 
the gravitons radiated by matter are absorbed by the dark reservoir of quantum potential energy via the zero-point field interface. This means that the dark reservoir of quantum potential energy acts as an energy sink. Four, the zero-point field interface is a bi-directional information layer allowing gravitons to enter the dark reservoir of quantum potential energy but also acting as a pressure release valve which we perceive as the Casimir effect. To ensure that the dark reservoir of quantum potential energy inflates very gradually, the zero-point field releases energy back into the physical universe to drive the experimentally observed accelerated cosmological expansion. Let's now summarise what we have learned. The lessons learned in this episode are quite straightforward. 1. When you switch on general relativity via the Friedman, Lemaitre, Robertson, Walker interpretation of space-time, you automatically switch off quantum mechanics. You are automatically switching off access to the quantum vacuum. This means that you are automatically switching off the most fundamental description of nature that humanity currently has. You need to ask yourself, is this a wise thing to do? If you are going to do this, it should not come as any surprise that you are going to break the law of conservation of energy because you are not comparing apples to apples. Two. The concept of massless photons contributes to the breakdown of the law of conservation of energy on a cosmological scale. Don't forget, the particle data group provisions for the existence of massive photons, so the jury is still out. 3. The concept of the cosmological constant, being constant from the Big Bang to the present epoch, also contributes to the breakdown in the law of conservation of energy. Don't forget, the cosmological constant can only have been undefined prior to the Big Bang, so how did it transition from an undefined state to a defined state? Surely this must have taken some time. Therefore, the logic of the cosmological constant being truly constant is highly questionable. 4. The electrogravimagnetic construct, as per the previous slides, describes the manner in which the law of conservation of energy is obeyed on a cosmological scale via the quantum vacuum. 5. The bottom line. Any and all gravitational models leading to a breakdown of the law of conservation of energy on a cosmological scale are absurd in the extreme.